to Canaan's land. I'm on my way where the soul never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul The just shall live by faith. This second video in our series on the Christian life of virtue offers a brief introduction to the theological virtue of faith. The just shall live by faith. St. Paul uses this phrase from the prophet Habakkuk to express his enthusiasm for the gospel, which he describes as the power of God for the salvation of all those who believe. So we are called to live by faith, and we are saved by believing. But what is this act of believing? Chapter 11 of the letter to the Hebrews affirms that whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. This implies that faith is something cognitive, that it is a type of knowing. We know that God, through believing, we know that God exists, and we know that he rewards those who seek him. But this cognitive act, this way of knowing, is not like other ways of knowing. Paul will say that we walk by faith, not by sight. Evident knowledge, like the knowledge that comes from seeing that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a form of seeing. I can put two things next to two other things and I see that it's true that the 2 plus 2 is 4. But faith, although it is eminently certain, is not evident like this. So we are called to walk by faith but not by sight. In this, faith has the character of a loving trust. If we look at the way in which St. Peter makes an act of belief at his confession of faith in Caesarea Philippi, or when we see Thomas's act of faith at the resurrection in the upper room when he encounters the risen Christ, those acts have a, the character of loving trust, Thomas knows something through his act of believing, but he knows it in a way that also engages his will. He affirms the truth of what he knows in this intimate encounter with Christ. Paul expresses this throughout his letters. He can almost never refer to faith without talking about two other realities. In a sense, we can say that although we walk by faith, living faith, that faith never walks alone. It is accompanied by the two other realities, the reality of hope and charity. And so throughout his letters, he will mention one and then the other. So he'll talk at the end of the great hymn to love. He'll say that faith, hope, and charity, these three remain. Or in that remarkable passage from chapter 5 of Galatians, he will affirm that through the Spirit, by faith, we await the hope of justice. For in Christ Jesus, the only thing that counts for anything is faith working through love. So faith's proper act has this twofold character. It is a certain knowledge but it is not evident knowledge. And so further on in the letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews will define faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Augustine conveys this aspect of belief by describing it as to think with assent, cum ascensione cogitare, Thomas Aquinas will flush out what this means by affirming that believing is an act of the intellect, assenting to the divine truth by the command of the will, moved by God through grace. And so the act of believing is a cognitive act, 
but as moved by the will which is itself moved by God in the gift of grace. So faith in God is just that. The object of faith is God. We believe through the profession of faith, through propositions. But as Aquinas will say, the believer's act of faith does not terminate in propositions. It does not come to rest in, in uh, propositions, but in the realities which these propositions express. Uh, we believe in God, the God whom we know as expressed through these propositions, but it is God whom we know. And so, uh, in order that man might arrive at perfect vision of heavenly happiness, he must first believe all that God uh, teaches us. And the description, the best way to understand this, is through the analogy of discipleship or apprenticeship. Uh, the apprentice begins by trusting the master so that he can go from uh, knowledge of some things to deeper knowledge. In order to learn, the learner must begin by believing, by trusting the master. Aristotle says this, and Aquinas picks it up to say that the disciple, uh, we must first believe as a disciple believes the master who is teaching him. And so Augustine will say, I believe in order to understand the process of growth. St. Paul will describe this through what he, descri what he calls the obedience of faith. He begins the letter of Romans and ends the letter of Romans with that phrase, the obedience of faith. We must listen to the God of truth who proclaims uh, this truth to us. But the precursor in all of this is Jesus, and it is through the mystery of the cross that we believe. This is difficult, but it is essential if we are to understand how faith is eminently certain, but not evident. It, faith leads us to the mystery of the cross, which is suffering and death, but through which we are brought to eternal life. That is why Abraham is described by Paul as the father of all who believe. Abraham is the first to encounter the mystery of Christ. He thinks he's going to sacrifice his son, and through the darkness of faith on his way to the mountain to sacrifice him, he encounters what? That the son to be sacrificed is someone else's son. God so loved the world that he sent his only son, not to condemn the world, but that we may have eternal life. Uh, through the mystery of of the cross and resurrection of Christ. We are promised resurrection and eternal life of the kingdom. This is the mystery of faith. The catechism, drawing upon all that the tradition affirms about the act of faith, will describe faith in the following terms. Faith is the theological virtue by which we believe in God and believe all that he has said and revealed to us and that Holy Church proposes for our belief because he is truth itself. This cognitive aspect of faith, if we are to grow in it, must always be animated by that appetitive aspect of hope and charity. This introductory account of our apprenticeship in the Christian life with Christ focuses on the knowledge of faith. In the next two videos, we must look at the love that is proper to the Christian life, to this loving trust in God. We will next look at the strange and neglected love, which is hope, and then the following video, look at charity. The just shall live by faith. I look forward to exploring this reality more deeply with you in subsequent videos. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewells, there'll be no tear-dimmed eyes. Where all is joy and peace and love and the soul of